Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news. Former Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein is firing back at former FBI Director James Comey. Mr. Rosenstein is about to speak at an event in Baltimore, Maryland. Our Evan Perez joins me now. Evan, what do we expect Mr. Rosenstein to say? Well, Anderson, this is the first time we're going to hear from the Deputy Attorney General since he left office over the weekend. And one of his first comments uh, that he's making is going after James Comey, the former uh, director of the FBI, who, as you remember, made comments uh, at the town hall with you last week questioning his character. Today, uh, Rosenstein says the following. He says, uh, we now see the former, uh, the former dire director is a partisan pundit selling books and earning speaking fees while speculating about the strength of my character and the fate of my immortal soul. He goes on to, to, uh, to point out that, generally speaking, uh, prosecutors and, and lawyers uh, base their opinions on eyewitness, uh, eyewitness testimony. Clearly, Anderson, the gloves are off for the Deputy Attorney General after two years overseeing the, uh, the Mueller investigation, and now he has, obviously, an answer to, to the comments made by the former director of the FBI, James Comey. Yeah, I want to play just for our viewers who didn't see it, uh, what Comey said right. to me just last Thursday night in our town hall uh, with the former FBI director. I think people like that, like Rod Rosenstein, who are people of accomplishment, but not real sterling character, strong character, find themselves trapped. And then they start telling themselves a story to justify their being trapped, which is, yeah, he's awful, but the country needs me. So Rod Rosenstein, you're saying, is a person not of a strong character. Yeah, I don't think he is. Of accomplishment, very bright, but he's not strong enough. I mean, the pretty uh, tough words for, for our, uh, the former FBI director uh, towards Rosenstein, Evan. Right. Clearly, Anderson, uh, comments that have gotten under Rosenstein's, uh, Rosenstein's skin. And look, uh, these comments, this speech, uh, we have uh, the prepared remarks for the speech that he's delivering tonight, that Rosenstein is delivering tonight in, in Baltimore. And uh, for the first time, you hear from his own words uh, exactly what went on when he was asked to write this memo that President Trump used to, to, as, as a reasoning to, to fire uh, Comey. And so you see for the first time his own words of exactly those harrowing days, frankly, those days of chaos. And uh, he does, uh, by the way, does not spare uh, criticism of, of President Trump himself. He said that if it was up to him, the firing of Comey would have gone, would have been handled very differently with far more respect and with far less drama. Anderson, you remember that Comey was traveling. Uh, he had gone to, the, uh, to, to Los Angeles to speak to the FBI field office there when he learned from watching on television screens, uh, from watching CNN and from fo watching Fox News, that he had been fired. And then the indignity uh, went further. The, uh, the president was, was actually angry that, uh, that Comey was allowed to fly back to Washington, D.C., fly home on the FBI director plane. Uh, that was something that he actually had to have uh, permission from the uh, deputy uh, FBI director, Andy McCabe, to be able to do. Again, the indignity of the way the, the firing was, car was right. carried out is what Rosenstein is, is, is taking issue with. It is pretty interesting, though, that Rosenstein is focusing uh, his criticism mostly, it seems, on uh, James Comey, uh, calling him a partisan pundit, when it was the president of the United States who, according to the Mueller report, tried to get Rosenstein to lie uh, about him being behind the firing of Comey and the White House press office tried right. to get the, uh, the Justice Department to put out a statement to the same effect, which is, uh, again, no mention of that or that being some sort of a reflection of the president, I guess, in his speech. But Evan Perez, thank you. Joining me right now with a reaction to all this is James Baker, the former FBI general counsel. Uh, Jim, first of all, what's your reaction to Rosenstein saying this tonight about Comey? Well, first, I don't want to get involved in or get in the middle of a sure. discussion about people's souls. I think that's just not my <laughs> that's not my position. Um, I mean, Jim Comey's a private citizen at this point in time, and quite honestly, I mean, Rod's actions with respect to the firing is the reason that Jim is a private citizen. So I think Jim gets to say what he feels is appropriate. I mean, that's, he's entitled under the First Amendment to say what he thinks is appropriate. So, does it? Um both these men, I mean, you work closely with them. What was their relationship like before all of this? I think historically it was pretty good. I mean, Rod was the U.S. attorney in Baltimore for a long time and I think knew Jim in a variety of different capacities uh, when Jim was deputy attorney general and U.S. attorney probably in, in New York. Uh, as you know, I mean, uh, 
uh, Rod came in uh, only a few weeks before Jim was fired, so they didn't have a long time to work together in, in that role. But I think they had a good and respectful relationship. And, and yet it was, and again, in the Mueller report, the president trying to get Rosenstein to hold a press conference saying that he was the one who was behind the firing and the White House press office also trying to get them to at least put out a statement. He resisted that, but that doesn't seem to have prevented Rosenstein from praising the president right before he left in a speech as somebody, you know, for following the rule of law. It was hard for me to understand really the contours of Rod's behavior throughout this whole thing. I didn't understand his logic or thinking with respect to the firing of Jim Comey. I just didn't simply understand it at that point in time. I greatly respected and supported his selection of Bob Mueller as special counsel. I thought that was an excellent move and his willingness to stand up for Bob throughout the, the time period. But I also didn't really completely understand why Rod in light of his role in the firing, and as you see some of the facts in the Mueller report now, I didn't understand why Rod didn't recuse himself, quite honestly. Uh, because he was so involved. He in was so involved in, in certain aspects of what the special counsel was looking at. I mean, maybe he got an opinion from the ethics folks at DOJ that cleared him, but it, I didn't completely understand it, and I think a lot of other uh, commentators have noted that as well. Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of people, Jeffrey Tubin would raise that question often, which yeah. is wh why, why, why wouldn't he have recused himself. I mean, what, what was the advantage for him to stay in? Well, I think the advantage was, I think he was afraid, I'm guessing, this is pure speculation on my part, I'm, I'm guessing he was afraid that uh, someone else would come in and perhaps more directly interfere with the Mueller investigation. Mm. So I think, I think at least in that part, his motives were right, but I think that's, you know, the, the idea here is we are supposed to stand up for the rule of law and, f and just do what the dictates of the law are. Were you surprised to hear James Comey level the criticism against Rod Rosenstein that he did, that he's not a, a, a man of strong character? Uh, given Jim's uh, perspective on these kind of things and given his experience, uh, it didn't surprise me, mm. no. The, um, the president quoted um, Tom Fitton on Twitter last night who said in part, the FBI has no leadership. The director is protecting the same gang that tried to overthrow the president through an illegal coup. Um, I mean, he's now talking about the FBI director who he appointed, Christopher Wray. The idea of a coup, that this was a coup attempt against the President of the United States is, uh, what, what do you make of those who say that this was a coup attempt? It's preposterous, it's preposterous. I was there, I was the general counsel of the FBI. I didn't see any coup, I didn't see any attempted coup, I didn't see any conspiracy to commit a coup. There was nothing that was going on like that. And, and I've said before, I would have stopped such a thing. I would not have allowed such a thing to go on. I would have found a way to bring that to light to the appropriate authorities and prevented that. I'd gone to the mat before on some things of a significant nature in the department, and there's no way that I would have supported such a thing. It, the, I mean, even using that word coup, it's a pretty dangerous word to use when talking about career civil servants, people have dedicated their lives to upholding the law and working in law enforcement uh, at great risk themselves. I mean, the word coup is something, you know, it's what some tin pot, di tin pot dictator accuses some colonel of doing to, in order to execute him. Yeah, it's not language that helps the country. It's not language that helps the country, so therefore I just simply don't understand it. It's not what happened. We were doing our best to follow the law in extraordinarily difficult circumstances. I mean, the director of the FBI had just been fired, you know, and all these, all these strange conversations that the director had had with the president at the president's inst instigation made no sense, very, very odd, very strange at, at a minimum. Um, and so, look, we were trying to uphold the rule of law and apply it in difficult circumstances. Could we have made mistakes? Of course we could have made mistakes, but nobody uh, in my experience or that was around me had any intention to do anything illegal or wrong or immoral. What has this done? I mean, what has the last two years been like for people within the FBI who just want to do their jobs and ser serve their country? Do, well, do, do, from the outside, it often looks like, you know, the president is trying to weaken institutions. He's certainly been, you know, going after the FBI. Rudy Giuliani uses phrases like stormtroopers. Um, just in terms of morale and what, what's it like? Well, on the one hand, the FBI is an incredible... Uh, incredibly resilient and professional organization and they will persevere through lots and lots of adversity. So I have every confidence in the rank and file, the FBI, to do the right thing and to, to keep the ship going in the right direction. At the same time, I, you know, look, Director Comey was an amazing leader. 
uh, like a leader of an organization and somebody you wanted, somebody that you would want in charge of an organization like that with a strategic vision, the way he cared about people within the organization, and people felt that. And so I think one of the things here is the, is one of the biggest things here is the loss, the loss for the FBI in terms of what is, what wouldn't happen, what's not going to happen, what, what opportunities are missed. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest tragedies with respect to all this, in addition to all the personal uh, costs that have been inflicted on many people.